Welcome to Tourism Talk. I'm your host, Mary Hammond, director of the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm delighted to return to Tourism Talk for this special edition with my friends. <laughs> and today, it's just exciting to have people from across Kentucky and from Washington, D.C. Jay Dick from Americans for the Arts. You are Senior Director of State and Local Government. We've um, met Jay when we visited with the Chamber Fly-In to Washington, D.C. and have become friends, and here he is to visit Paducah. We have Lori Meadows, and she's the Executive Director of the Kentucky Arts Council, and Ben Chandler, and Ben is the Director um, of the Kentucky Humanities Council, and I'm delighted to serve on your board. Thank you very much, Mary. Well, welcome, all three Thank of you. you. This Thank is you. such a special treat. I haven't done a tourism talk in a long time, but to be here with you three is just um, exciting. And Jay, thank you for making this trip to Paducah, coming here and to uh, meet with us. We've been exploring Paducah. I think you even tried your hand at quilting. I did. With one of I the um, experiences. First time uh, quilting since junior high, so that's quite quite uh, amazing. There, it's been a wonderful time here, uh, visiting here. Thank you for having me down. But yes. um, you know, I've been talking at American Arts. We're a national uh, trade association, research and advocacy group that have been around for I think we're on our 53rd or 54th mm -hmm. year. We're based in Washington D.C., but we have uh, you know uh, groups, 5,000 local arts agencies. Lori, you're a good member of ours. Yes. We enjoy that uh, from the Arts Council, and so we work uh, a lot uh, throughout the country. And Paducah's a uh, city that I've talked about for uh, for. 10 years now at American Thank City you. Arts. Uh, it's just a wonderful little town uh, that's doing a lot of things that are really um, stuff that Chicago would be proud of, to, of doing. You know, when I first heard about, you know, your, your lower uh, arts town, um, that what you were doing with the Artist Relocation Project, that was amazing because so many times you try to bring in an artist and then what do artists do? They, they improve the, the community and then they get priced out because they rent, they don't own. This is where they actually own. And so that's really what got our attention at the national level. And then to have a, a city with a population of 25,000 people or so doing as many things as, as, as you are. I just got done with a, a luncheon, you know, where I had 20 some folks uh, uh, that just kind of uh, arts leaders that dropped in. You know, there's all, you know, I'm just amazed at all the, the activity. You, know, you have a lot to be proud of. The murals are, are beautiful and you know, it's, just, it's just wonderful. And so you have the beauty of stuff, but then you also have the, the economics behind mm -hmm. it too. And that's kind of why I'm here. I'm speaking to the, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, one of their breakfasts, and I'm gonna be talking about why the arts matter economically. Yeah, the arts are nice uh, to, to look at or to see, or there's a museum mm -hmm. or whatever, but what happens if those, those museums you know, all closed or there was nothing there? You know, Paducah would be hurting you know, economically. And so, um, you know, I'm going to be talking about how the arts are, are really, you know, an industry. Um, there was a, a study that recently came out from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. Uh, so Department of Commerce, um, they do uh, what's called a satellite report, and basically they look at gross domestic product. And so the arts and culture are 4.32% uh, of gross domestic product in, in the nation. So is that a lot or is that a little? Well, actually, uh, tourism, uh, I'm sorry, tourism is 3%. Three, uh, 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 construction, 2.7, and uh, transportation, about 2.6. Wow. So the, actually the arts and culture, and, 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 and when I say arts and culture, I mean you know from your libraries to your heritage uh, groups to your quilters to whatever, they, they're a huge part of our industry, uh, larger than construction and, and transportation. And so That's uh, amazing. You have, it is amazing. And you guys have it going so well here in Paducah. Uh, and then when I travel across the country, I talk about uh, you know, Paducah all right. the time because you're a wonderful example of what even a small little city can be doing. Well, and I love it. I love the depth of our products that we have here. I'm always telling the mayor our team is deep, <laughs> and it is. Uh, uh, we've got uh, so uh, varied uh, cultural product um, from the, the the amount of museums we have, um, the from here at the college to the Performing Arts Center. I mean, who has two Performing Arts Centers mm -hmm. in a town our size? Uh, the, the, the depth is there, and we all work together, which has allowed us to mm -hmm. reach the UNESCO Creative mm -hmm. Cities status. And uh, I'm very proud of that, but we couldn't do that without uh, about everybody working together. And it goes back to working with the arts, working with the humanities, 
telling Kentucky's story and the story that makes us unique from all the other destinations and gives us the fabulous quality of life that we really do have here well, in our community. Well, Jay, we're really pleased to have you in Thank town you. Yes. and to, yes. to shine a spotlight on Paducah and the great things that are happening in Paducah. Uh, of course, we want the whole country, we want the whole <laughs> world to know about what great things are going on here in Paducah. Uh, but I think actually people in the rest of our own state yes. don't realize the, the <clears throat> strides that mm -hmm. have been made here in Paducah and McCracken County. It's incredible what's happening in, in, in the cultural areas. Uh, I've been coming in and out of Paducah what? for a quarter of a century now in one way or another, and mostly in political office, <laughs> I hate to say. But now that I'm in a job that, uh, that I can really do things that are fun with people, but also have an important economic mm -hmm. impact, I have seen over those years how Paducah has grown its cultural mm -hmm. efforts and really, really well. And it's been an impressive, an impressive effort on the part of the people here locally. I, I think, uh, and, and among other things, I want to give out a, a quick shout out to the library. Uh, this, this community has an incredible library. And I see libraries all over the state. It's an important asset, one of the many cultural mm -hmm. assets that are important to this community but it stands out in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. They have wonderful programs. I know um, um, every night there's activity. In fact, if you want to book a space at the library, it's, it's hard to get in there, but mm -hmm. we're very, very fortunate. Of course, they also act almost as a, a visitor's bureau office because of the amount of people who come in asking for information. But this is, uh, that's all just uh, one of the many facets of, of the story. And they're telling the, everything from, uh, from the arts, the music. Uh, somebody said earlier today, um, if there's something going on in Paducah, the library is, is tagging onto it. They're finding a way to involve um, in all of those cultural activities. So, that, And that's one reason we are a creative community. If there's something else going on, everybody piggybacks together and it becomes not just a lone wolf activity, but everyone, um, it, it helps us become a destination for visitors. So uh, we're kind of the odd man sometimes in tourism, but we don't have anything to sell without the culture and our story, and the story comes through the arts. Well, Laura can tell you what that means <laughs> yes. for our community, well, I'm telling right. you. Absolutely, yes. I was going to say I agree completely. Um, like Ben, I've been coming in and out of Paducah for several years and have really seen the cultural community grow over the past mm -hmm. many years. Um, we work with a lot of the organizations here, a lot of the artists, and I think one of the interesting things is it's not just one thing. Right. It's not just the performing arts or the visual arts or the history. Mm -hmm. It's all of those things here in Paducah, and you know that makes it really special. Of course, um, you know we like to think that Kentucky is very special, and there are communities across the state that have a lot of different entities. But Paducah is a little bit different in the sheer number of um, cultural activities, events, facilities that exist in the city. I always tell the story of, um, and I think this, I, I tell it is Paducah's story, but the other river cities along the Ohio River, people uh, were adventuresome who left the original 13 colonies coming towards the 15th state. And as they were, they were coming west, they came on the river through the Cumberland Gap, so they came through Kentucky. And they left pieces of their culture that have made us who we are today. And it was a long time before we took advantage of that, of using it to identify ourselves and to grow it. And I heard you all talking about your 50th anniversaries. And I, and I think if you go into a, our culture, that that 50th anniversary is very uh, prominent right now. And that was a time when we were all started uh, banding together to look at how can we use this to improve our lives and to, to attract people and, um, but is it, am I saying that right? Yes. <laughs> well, maybe we ought to say a little bit about our organization. So yes, so they, there we go. We, 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 <laughs> Lori and I represent, and I'll let Lori talk about hers just a sec. I, re, I am the director of Kentucky's Humanities Council and we are Kentucky's affiliate of the National Endowment for the Humanities which was created on the national level by Congress 50 years ago at the very same time as our sister organization, 
the National Endowment for the Arts. And the Kentucky Arts Council, which I lead, is the state arts agency. Mm -hmm. And so as Ben said, we are sister agencies and um, uh, the National Endowment for the Humanities and the National Endowment for the Arts, they're critical to the states across the country. And you know, we are certainly thankful to the National Endowment for the Arts and, and the National Endowment for the Humanities, not only for what they provide to the country, but what they bring to the state. As Jay was telling us uh, some of the impact, and I'd like to get a little bit deeper into that, but let's just kind of, so just so everybody, because not everybody who might be watching this understands, okay, so when you're talking about art, okay, painting, um, are they calling quilting art? Is that art? <laughs> Is it, you know, it's, it, so talk a little bit about, so what, who do you work with? What type of cultural community do you work with? We, we look at the arts in the broadest sense. So certainly painting, certainly mm -hmm. quilting, you know, performances, literary arts, but we also look at folk and traditional arts. And those are things that, traditions that come out of a community, mm -hmm. whether it be a geographical community or it be a community, perhaps a, a professional or occupational mm -hmm. community. So even things like food traditions, boat building, that sort of thing, those are folk and traditional arts. And so the work that we do in the organizations, community, schools, artists, and creatives, um, that's a little bit different word that people are starting to use now, but really it means looking outside of what people think of as artists in the traditional sense and looking at all of those people that do creative work. And of course we get some of our, um, you might call them muse museums, attractions, and even though they, you may not think, oh, well, that's not the arts. Well, they, they are because the things that are happening within those organizations are very much part of the arts. Now, it's not everything because it's heritage. It's a little bit of everything, but the arts are, are such a part of being creative and how you're um, interpreting, if it be the history or the story of the river or the... Um, all the way back with well with the Civil War Museum. This is where the humanities right. come Thank into the you. picture, <laughs> right. Mary. That's right. I was and, there. And, yeah, and the, and the humanities really are, they're they're so closely tied together, the arts and the humanities, mm -hmm. and that's why, of course, they were created by the Congress mm -hmm. at the same time. But uh, the humanities really, it, if you look at it broadly, it's about culture. It's about mm -hmm. human culture, and it can be writing. It can be. Many it's the culture that we've created as human beings. It's the heritage of that culture, the history, our own history. Mm -hmm. That's why the theme of the Kentucky Humanities Council is telling Kentucky's story. And we want to be a big part of telling Paducah's story. And it's a fascinating story, as we all know. What I love about the UNESCO Creative Cities, UNESCO has many programs, and then they have those that are of the earth, um, the uh, World Heritage Sites, as in Mammoth Cave, but then you've got a Creative Cities program that's about the culture of the people and keeping that culture, so it, uh, the sustainability of it, telling the story, encouraging the artist, so it really, the, uh, the Creative Cities program is pulling all of us together to make sure that we have that story well, to tell in the future. Well, and you know why this is so important, and we were all talking about this earlier today, but tourism, what's really driving tourism, and that's what brings right. dollars into a community, What's driving tourism is the uniqueness of a particular place. Yes, absolutely. People want to come to a place that's unique, that's different from Authentic. every other place. Yes. yes. And the heritage of that place, mm -hmm. when you can shine a spotlight and celebrate that heritage and bring it out for people, you will attract more people yes. to that community. Yeah. And that's, that's what we want to do here in Paducah. But this also has a great impact, and I love it. Uh, do you have something that you can share with us? I mean, I love to hear in Paducah the special numbers. I'm not sure yeah. you had. Those well, I'll numbers. have. I'm going to talk national, and then I'm going to yes. turn a little bit okay. over for for state level. But yeah, it's you know everything we've been talking about. It's all very nice. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean to our economy? Mm -hmm. And that's right. what, that's what it oftentimes boils down. And we have a great story to tell. Uh, the nonprofit arts, according to our national study, our arts economic prosperity study that Kentucky has, has participated in the past, the arts are $135 billion a year industry. You know, that's, that's a lot of money. You know, they employ, you know, over 4.1 million uh, 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 jobs that are out there. And then the best part is they contribute about $26 billion uh, in tax, tax revenue. Very important. So I always ask people when I go out and talk, so how much do you think the federal, state, and local governments all toll, if you add up everything that even looks like the arts, uh, how, how much that is. 
and that's about $4 billion if you really squint and count the parking lots across from the museums or whatever. So that's about a six to one return on investment. The mm -hmm. arts are not this frill. The arts are part of our uh, economy that gives back sixfold. And I always say, if this was an IPO on Wall Street, I would take the arts and culture and heritage. They are a great asset, uh, yes. and certainly to Paducah. If you would remove all those uh, people, all the tourists mm -hmm. that are coming for that authentic experience, Paducah would be in would be hurting. You really mm -hmm. would. But that is, you know, what you uh, you have such unique experiences here that people come year after year, and it adds into those numbers. And so. Uh, you know, there's a tremendous amount of employment there, and I know you have some state numbers. Uh, Absolutely. That. Um, I'll start off talking about it, the creative industry study that we finished in December of this past year, and we re yes, that's Very right, nice. right here. Um, <laughs> we really looked at um, the creative industry in Kentucky. We were very conservative in looking at our numbers because we wanted to to show that you know we weren't trying to uh, expand anything where we didn't absolutely have the information to back it up. But in Kentucky, uh, creative jobs count for about 106,000 jobs. Interestingly, that is more than Kentucky's automotive and aircraft industry. Wow. And we all know that that's a significant indi industry in the state. <coughs> uh, if we look at the organizations that the Kentucky Arts Council provides operating support to, and there are a number of those organizations here in Paducah, I'm happy to say. Um, we provided $1.8 million in operating support to those organizations in fiscal year 14. The revenue generated by those organizations was over $65 million. So you can see mm -hmm. that really they are bringing uh, a lot of revenue in to the communities, and that's happening all across mm. the state. Certainly, Paducah is a major player mm. in that respect, but uh, you know, from Paducah to Pikeville, uh, we have that happening. Mm. Well, from uh, from McCracken County specifically, here we have something called our Arts and Economic Prosper. I'm sorry, our Creative Industries reports, where we go and uh, we 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 try to find out how many creative industries there are out there. And by creative industries, anywhere it's anywhere from where we're at today, film and video, to the libraries, to the um, you know, uh, traditional theaters or whatever. And in McCracken for uh, January 1, uh, there was 158 arts-related uh, businesses that employ 743 people. So again, 743 people, sure. is that a big number, is that a low number? If you actually put them all in one building, they would be the fifth largest employer in the county. And again, we don't realize right. that, that we are an integral, you know, yes. necessary part of Paducah, McCracken mm -hmm. uh, counties. Uh, industry and so you know and this is something these are not jobs that are going to be exported mm -hmm. overseas these are you know local jobs that pay real dollars in their in their for for uh, for paychecks that put money back into the economy through taxes and are you know it's, it's a very powerful tool and and I and I commend Paducah you do a great job of harnessing that uh, telling that story and letting folks know why you know the arts culture and heritage are so important to you know this this area and I and I applaud you for that. Well thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. We have invested in developing experiences. Uh, you did the one at the Quilt Museum. Mm -hmm. The River Discovery Center has one, Yeiser Art Center, the Tillman Civil War Museum, and the Hotel Metropolitan. And those are, are good um, to work with uh, group tours, convention attendees. Uh, so they're they're an activity where you're the days of just looking at the wall as we all know and looking at what's oh that's pretty People want to own it. They want to try their hand at it, as you did at the sewing machine today. Yeah. So this, um, but we've been very, uh, have invested in it, and it, it's good. We'll do some more of it this year. So we're we're very fortunate that we have people with open minds, willing to put their time because making those experiences, it's a it's a very time consuming to create them, come up with something that will continue to it, to bring new people in. Right. And your organization, Mary, has done an excellent job of focusing on the arts and the cultural activities and offerings in the community and showing people across the country what exists here and then inviting them to come in and share what we have here in Paducah. So I think that's, yeah, you know, you. that's great. Thank you. Well, it has indeed, and, and it just goes to show you, you know, as Jay said, mm -hmm. He doesn't come to towns this size, usually, from Washington. No. It is a tribute to Paducah mm -hmm. that he's here to highlight Paducah. And uh, Laurie and I have watched from the state level 
And I think both of us would say that uh, Paducah is pretty special. Yes. Well, it's in, in part, well, it is due to the people who are here. Well, yes. And it's, uh, that's, that is exactly who it is. And although people may not think that they're a part of it, they might, may not think that they are being creative. And that is one of our um, goals this year is to, to show that to be creative and to be, uh, that you, to be your own type of artist doesn't mean that you're um, creating with just a paintbrush, that you're creating being an uh, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. There's many ways to be creative. Well, even just look at one of the biggest industries now is uh, computer programming and gaming, mm -hmm. you know, computer games. Those are all mm -hmm. creative jobs, you know. It's just not the traditional oil and paint, That's you right. know, and canvas. It is, it's, it's sitting on a keyboard. But you're really, you know, you're mm -hmm. still really, you know, creative, you know. So it's, you know, the traditional what is a creative job right. is is all over the place. You have uh, architects that are designing buildings. That's it's a type of art. Me. Now it's still yeah. not something that's considered when you're looking at these um, uh, categories. Mm -hmm. They're not, good, but they're creative industry. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if you would expand, you know, and if you would expand, you know, mm -hmm. those numbers that I gave, uh, for example, are a tremendous underrepresentation of what's going mm -hmm. on because uh, we only count exactly what we can see, and if we can't right. see it, I know in your report yes, too, same thing. we don't count it because right. we don't want anyone to come back and say, oh, you're 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 you're, mm -hmm. you're blowing your numbers up. No, you know, so it's complete underrepresentation of Absolutely. what's truly out there. Very you know. conservative. Yeah. Well, I love uh, that you are three are here. That you're. Also, while you're here uh, visiting with everybody, not just around the table, but one-on-one, -on -one, and we welcome your input. Um, we'd like to be a part of it. Um, sometimes we get lost down here at this end of the state, but you all don't forget us, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful to be a part of, of the team effort. And Kentucky is a very creative state all the way around. I love with how the state uh, travel and tourism, how they're how they are uh, representing us in their commercials um, that are out there. Uh, first time I think we've looked at them and gone, yes, they're representing really who we are. We have a great recreation, uh, adventure tourism, but Kentucky, the culture here is just so rich and we continue to, uh, to grow it and to learn from it. Well, you know what we're looking at doing this week from Paducah, Paducah is sort of as the center of it, but you and I are going to Columbus in Hickman County, part of the purchase, and we're going to try to weave together a Ulysses S. Grant yes. tourism trail in the western mm -hmm. part of our state. In western Kentucky, uh, the purchase in particular, we see Paducah as the potential hub of this because it was so important in the Civil War, and we're talking to some folks in Missouri about putting it together, but it's the kind of thing yes. that brings people in here to, yes. to be good tourists and to, to spend their money right here. Thank you for being a leader and pulling us together. I've spoken with these folks with the U.S. Grant Trail, but we weren't quite sure how to go about doing this. So you're working with the uh, Humanities Council in, in Missouri. Missouri. And mm -hmm. um, I love that because we need your experience and your leadership in pulling this trail together. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to have fun excited. doing it. Well, General Grant was there. here. You know, I mean, oh, he was. Was. Grant slept here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and those trails are wonderful economic engines, too. You, you know, mm -hmm. people love, as you were saying earlier, they love to come you just and, and check it off. Yep, I'm yes. here. And they just continue on down the road. Uh, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're having a lot of people coming through. And you know, and again, and again, according to a lot of our studies, uh, cultural tourists, mm -hmm. those people that are traveling for cultural events, uh, stay on average of I think an extra one day, and then I think they, they spend an extra seven hundred and forty some dollars mm -hmm. than a traditional tourist would be. Those are the tourists you want. Absolutely. You know? yes. uh, and if you have something again that is that unique, authentic experience that they can't get anywhere else, you're going to get them to come well, you, here. You wouldn't believe the number of tourists from Europe for instance, oh, who yes. are interested in the American Civil War. Uh, they mm -hmm. actually are interested in it and they want to come mm -hmm. over and they want to see what yeah. happened and see those places where it happened. And we have the ability to offer some of that right here. The and brochure, I'm sorry, the brochure we cannot keep in the office is the Kentucky Civil War Trail. Ah, <laughs> very popular. Yeah. Anytime you add a new component or a new experience yes. to what you have going on, it's only going to make people more eager to stay longer and to come back because you know if they come through for the new trail mm -hmm. and um, yes. you know they're 
chances are they won't be able to go to or attend everything that Paducah has to offer. Well, what will they need to do? They'll need to come back and you know maybe <laughs> stay right. longer and, uh -huh. and bring more people yep. with them. So and the quilters do that. They're not just here during the quilt show. They are, they may have come with their group of friends, but you know they go home and they're talking to their spouses and their friends. Come on, you've got to come with me next time. Oh, we'll stop there. You know, uh, incorporate it into our the rest of our other trips. So it's really good. I'm thankful for what you all bring to us. I urge anyone watching this to to check out uh, the Americans for the Arts. Um, look at that Paducah white paper on there. Uh, the the, the Kentucky Arts Council, who also included Paducah in the Creative Industry Report. Check out the uh, Chautauqua characters that are with, offered through the Kentucky Humanities Council that we often see at the Paducah Public Li McCracken County Public Library. <laughs> we changed to McCracken County from Paducah, so it's McCracken County Public Library. It was one of the very big customers of the Kentucky Humanities Council. Absolutely. But uh, you know, we're going to have to get some artists in that program, some of the artists from the past. I think uh, Betty Dobson was talking some about the, the musical artists. That, well, that we have su here. such a strong connection and historic connection to yes. Paducah. It's the only town in the state, with the exception of Louisville, yes. that actually has two members on our board, for instance. <laughs> so uh, Paducah has a a lot to say about what happens with the humanities in Kentucky. Uh, that's just one thing, but as you say, uh, our connection with the library, our connection with the with the Metropolitan yeah, Hotel. Hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very it's, good. Uh, the, with the quilting right. uh, museum and their efforts. Well, these are three big supporters of Paducah and we love it. Jay is giving us the statistics that we need when we go to talk about funding and, and support. Um, the, both of you all, the Humanities and the Arts Council, um, providing funding for special programs. Uh, we love it. Thank you for continuing to help make our product better all the time and giving the inspiration that we need as a community to continu continue to grow. Well, our time is running very short here. Any last comments? I think we've just got a minute left. Well, I'll just say, I want to just say thanks for the, the Southern hospitality. This has been wonderful oh. uh, to visit here. I, I heard so many great things about this, this community, and I get to experience them now firsthand, so I'm really blessed to be here. So I really thank you for your hospitality. Oh, thank you for being here. So thank you. We are, um, we'll do everything we can to continue to support you all. It's this mutual admiration society mm -hmm. and uh, keep things going here and growing and just getting bigger and better. We'll move on up to fourth in, uh, instead of fifth <laughs> in, in McCracken County. Thank you for joining us. Um, as always, look at our website, www.paducah.travel. We have a new website debuting. Be sure and check it out. You'll wanna see what's happening in our community. In the meantime, if you're downtown, please stop and see us, 128 Broadway. We love to talk to our friends here in town. Thanks again. We'll Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-